Unlocking the Secrets of Stars, Part 2, Classifying the Night Sky, The Computers, Brazosport Planetarium Online Planetarium Show. The Women Who Opened the Door to Astronomy. Henry Draper married Marianne Palmer. She enjoyed her husband's passion for astronomy and was happy to assist him in his work in astronomy and photography. On their honeymoon, Henry and Marianna Draper purchased a very large, very wide, thick piece of glass, which would become the mirror for the telescope you see at the right. They spent their honeymoon shaping and polishing this glass so it would perfectly reflect the night sky. They later had it coated with silver. Henry Draper's dream was to see the entire night sky visible from the earth, photographed through telescopes. The Drapers went out west to photograph the sun's corona in 1878 during a total solar eclipse. She did not see the actual eclipse as she remained in their tent during the short minutes of totality to monitor the camera settings to make this beautiful picture. A Great Gift Mariana Draper was the heiress of a great fortune, so the Drapers decided to donate Henry's fortune to a university that would fulfill the obligation attached to his bequest. The obligation was to photograph the entire night sky as seen from the earth, both northern and southern hemispheres. This was quite a big ask and the Drapers were turned down several times. Harvard Astronomy Department accepted the bequest. Sadly, Henry Draper died of a fever at age 45. His widow supervised the project. She transferred his telescopes, photographs, books of notes, and observations to Harvard Observatory. She even had observatory buildings moved there. She often spent time at the observatory listening to and encouraging the staff. By the time of her own death, she had gifted $250,000 to the project. In her will, she gifted $150,000 for the storage and preservation of the vast work. The project goal was very well met. There are several hundred thousand glass photographic plates of the entire sky. The collection can be found at Harvard to this day. A negative of the Andromeda Galaxy from the Harvard archives. Every dot is a star. The large swirl is the Andromeda Galaxy. Photographs began to arrive. The images were printed on 8 by 10 inch and 11 by 17 inch glass plates. Each plate had hundreds to thousands of stars, and now they needed to be examined. Every nebula and star must be located with coordinates, and its brightness must be measured and recorded. College men, like these, were hired to evaluate the stars and nebula found on the glass slides. The work was exacting and tedious. It did not go well. Their supervisor, astronomer Charles Pickering, director of Harvard Observatory, cited lack of concentration and attention to detail as the issue. He fired the entire team. Now, Pickering's problem was to find a new team to do this work. His wife suggested that their housemaid, Wilhelmina Fleming, could do the job, as she was very intelligent, careful, and a disciplined worker. Pickering 
liked the idea and hired her for the observatory and soon put her in charge of the project. Mrs. Fleming was a remarkable woman. She was a Scottish immigrant, a teacher by profession, whose husband abandoned her when they arrived in New York City. Pregnant and alone in a strange country, and soon with a baby to take care of, she found what work she could. She was pleased to find a job as a housekeeper for the Pickerings. Mrs. Fleming was most happy to take this new position. She hired a group of very capable women to do the exacting work of interpreting the data. They were to be a new team of computers. The women were paid 25 to 30 cents per hour to measure and record the stellar data, equivalent to about $9 per hour in 2021. And so the meticulous work began. Although Mrs. Fleming's team were to focus on examining the photographic plates for locations, color, and brightness only, they learned a great deal from the stars they examined. They studied the plates, they made discoveries, and they got credit for their work. Mrs. Draper, seen above and in the larger picture, seated center, would stop in to see the progress of the work and discuss the new findings that the team discovered. This is part of an annotated slide marked by the computers. Different colors mark the work of different computers. The computers had the responsibility and freedom to decide how to proceed with the work. As a place to start decoding the information, Wilhelmina Fleming invented a classification system for the stars based on how strong the dominant hydrogen spectral lines were on each star. The system was arranged using the alphabet from A to Q. Stars with the A designation had the strongest hydrogen line. Annie Jump Cannon studied physics and astronomy at Wellesley College and astronomy at Radcliffe. She spent her long career studying the Harvard Star Collection. She convinced the team to reorder the alphabetical listing of the stars to a listing based on temperature. Miss Cannon maintained the letters used by Mrs. Fleming, but rearranged the letters of the classes of spectra by temperature, hottest to coolest, O, B, A, F, G, K, M. This uncovered patterns across the spectra. The system is still used today. O stars are the hottest type of star, the sun is a G star. The system is remembered by astronomy students with a monomic, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. The pattern of the lines in the spectra show temperature and composition. Stars are mostly hydrogen and helium. Color is not required in recording the spectra. A diffraction grating was placed in front of the observatory cameras so that stars could be quickly identified in the black and white pictures of the day. Henrietta Leavitt, at first an unpaid volunteer member of the team, looked for deeper information in the glass plates. She had a bit more freedom to follow where the work led her. A graduate of Radcliffe College, she had also lost her hearing after an illness 
and found the work on the Starfields occupation that could challenge and bring her joy. The dark lines on this glass plate show brighter stars. Faintly under the top dark smear is a fainter black and white spectrum of each star's light. From this smear, through a magnifying glass, series of tiny lines spell out temperature and composition of the star. Classification proceeded at a rapid pace, color, temperature, chemical composition. Discoveries would follow. See part three of this series for a look at some of the discoveries made by this grand team.